This is amazing stuff right here. I'm standing here at home behind an old garage on the property and I got all of this compost for free. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do the same thing. Look at this crappy sandy soil we have right here. It is all over the place on my property. But right here, I've got a really good compost amendment, whatever you wanna call it, that can go directly into the garden. You can do this on any property. So the million dollar question is, why is there really good compost right here? And just two feet over here, I've got sandy, really crappy soil that you pretty much can't grow anything in. I have a very clear and simple answer for you. Last winter, we had our chickens right here behind the garage. You can even see their old chicken door right here in the corner. And they had this area back here for the winter time. You may notice that this looks like really good fertile compost and you're right, that's exactly what it is. Before I dug this up or removed what's on top of it, this is what it looked like. And I'm gonna show you how to get this for your garden on any property. Since this compost at one point in time look just like that. I'll show you what happens when I kind of pull back these vines that grew here over the summer and all those pine needles that are on top. When you get down in there, it's exactly the same stuff that we have right over there. But I mean, goodness, this is just really good stuff. I mean, and the beautiful thing is it's fall right now. It's the perfect time to put things on your garden beds. And it doesn't matter if it's an in-ground bed or if it's a raised bed. Of course, I'm gonna put this in my raised beds because that's what I have. But if you have an in-ground bed, you can just add this to your bed that's already there and it just helps amend the soil and make it more fertile to begin with. This is not just for people with raised beds. And there's a few things you're gonna to want to make this process easy and simple. You want organic matter. That can be wood chips, pine needles, whatever you have. We use leaves because we've got a million kajillion trees in our property, so it's a free resource and why not? If the things are mulched a little bit more, it's gonna help with the breakdown process, but they don't have to be mulched. Thing number two is time. Time is gonna help with the snow falling and the temperatures rising and falling all the time, time is going to help. Of course, if you are using leaves or pine needles, you're gonna need something to collect them with. That can be a rake or a lawnmower that's gonna collect them in a bagger system. That's completely up to you. Obviously, a rake is cheaper, a lawnmower is more expensive and much more high maintenance, but I'll leave that part up to you. We had the chickens by the garage where I was just standing moments ago where you saw me. These chickens have been moved so that we can be right next to the garden. It's a much better setup for us so all the garden waste can go to the chickens and when the chickens create compost and go back on the garden, they kind of work hand in hand. You don't need chickens, it just helps speed up the process. And since we have a gajillion trees on our property, all of these leaves are gonna fall shortly within the next couple of weeks. We're gonna pick up those leaves with the lawnmower and put them in our chicken run so that next spring it will become compost and soil that can go directly on our garden. It may not look like it to you, but this is actually quite sloped as far as the chicken run. From the end way up there to down here, it goes down in elevation, which is by design, so that when I'm putting things on the upper side, gravity and the chickens working things bring it down to this end of the chicken run. You can find this compost just like what I was talking about. Look at that in there. All of that really dark, broken down organic matter is compost. And that happened just in one season with these chickens in there. Well, how did I create that compost that was behind the garage? Well, it was just because I dumped a whole bunch of leaves in that area, leaves that we would have to pick up already. Instead of tossing them into the woods, I decided to toss them where the chickens were, where we were keeping the chickens for the winter. And pretty soon, this entire run is going to be filled with leaves. In a matter of no time, there's gonna be a good 12 to 18 inches of leaves in here. It doesn't matter if it's a pile. It doesn't matter if you evenly spread them out. The chickens are going to take care of that for you. You can notice that you will not find one weed inside of the chicken run. All of that's gone. All of the things you see here is organic matter either from our kitchen, from kitchen waste, or from the garden, from garden waste as we've been harvesting our garden. Keep your chicken run small so you can contain the area and the compost is concentrated and it is not all over the place. For example, if you have four chickens, don't let the chickens have access to an entire acre. I purposely keep mine about 10 by 20, 10 feet wide by the width of the garden, which is 20 feet. 
and right alongside of it so it kind of lines up and it's just an extension of our garden basically. By doing that, it really helps build up some good quality compost that can go on the garden in just a few months time. I'm gonna let you zoom in here. Our garden has been greatly harvested the last couple of weeks. I mean, hundreds of pounds of tomatoes uh, just for one crop, let alone all the celery and the carrots. And you may have seen those videos, but this bed right here was filled with cabbages, which we've harvested. And if you know anything about raised beds, they do settle, especially these raised beds, because it's kind of like a Hugo culture thing where I've got logs and sticks and leaves underneath the soil. If you look here, the dirt was probably here when last season started. And the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because this is a great way to fill raised beds or top them off at the end of the season after everything is kind of settled down. So once I pick up all of that soil that was behind the garage that you saw earlier, that's gonna fill up this entire raised bed right over here, which is six feet wide by four feet across, just this little section that you can see here. That's plenty to fill up just this area. If you have a way of mulching your leaves, that's gonna work a lot better. If you don't mulch your leaves, what happens is that they kind of create this, this layer on top of the soil and it doesn't allow a lot of oxygen to enter and things just take longer. You may need to go in there with some kind of pitchfork and turn things around like a conventional compost pile. Before you comment down below that this is basically just a compost pile, it's really not. A compost pile is when you have a fixed area that you go out and labor yourself. A compost pile is where you maybe have stages of things that are just starting, then right next to it you have something that is a little bit more well developed into compost, and then the final pile is actual compost that's ready to go right directly into your garden. What I'm doing is I'm skipping all those stages, I just throw everything into one spot and let the chickens do the rest. And the reason why this is so good and so valuable where I thought I need to make a video to share this with people is because you don't have to do anything after you get rid of the leaves and put them in the chicken run. You literally just put them there and walk away. That stuff behind the garage earlier, I did nothing other than just put the leaves there and I probably would have done it anyway because that's a deep bedding method for the chickens. I wasn't even thinking that that would eventually go in the garden because I knew that I was eventually gonna move the chickens next to the garden and just use the compost they created there. Another really cool thing that I didn't mention yet is that we hardly have any chickens at all. We have five right now. When they were behind that garage over there, we had three. Five is our magic number for our family, for our egg needs and, you know, just to manage and the coop that I have built for them. But a big mistake that a lot of people make when they get chickens to help their garden is they get way too many. But my point is you don't need nearly as many chickens as you think. If you're going out to get chickens for the first time ever in your life, and for some reason you have a magic number of 15, I would seriously consider dividing that in half or even just going with a third of that starting with five. So you can already see all of these leaves in this particular area in my yard because of all of these massive oak and maple trees that are here. I take all of the leaves in the bag and I dump them into the chicken run so we have a ton of leaves just from that one day. It is like an overfill. Now once I get up to a certain point, let's say I get up to 24 inches of leaves in the chickens, I'll stop, then I'll create a pile on the edge of the yard that I can go back for if I need to get more. I keep a pile specifically over there. Other people come and get leaves sometimes because they wanna use them in their garden or with their chickens. And it's just a free resource that I can use for mulch on the garden or put back in the chicken run to use them for them to break down the compost if it's necessary throughout the season. If you're removing leaves from your yard either way, you might as well put them in a place where they're going to work for you instead of dumping them into the woods, which is fine, I guess. But if you can find a spot where they're gonna have results like, like this, like I showed you, then you're better off putting them there. I get asked all the time about what we use to fertilize our garden because it's so green and so abundant. We get so much produce from it. And my answer is nothing. This is what we put in our garden. Stuff like this. Stuff that's broken down, organic matter, full of nutrients. You can tell just by looking at it, you can smell it. Like just standing here, I can smell how good this is. What you really need is good soil to begin with. And this is certainly going to help you have very, very good soil. You know, some of that compost was not really broken down as much as I would like for planting in, but here's the beauty of that. It's fall right now. And by the time we start planting again next spring, that's gonna be well on its way to being ready. The best time to prep your gardens is in the fall. If you can get things ready in the fall, it's gonna have all the more success because it's gonna have time to incorporate into the soil 
you already have in your garden. Make sure you hit subscribe right here because it really helps spread the word that I want so many people to hear about simplifying your life to increase its quality. I want people to leave the rat race and realize that there's a better path to having a more fulfilled life. Check out another video over here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.